Bree and I are traveling across the continent and we're trying to train our dogs at the same time. I think today we'll finally start to break through with Veronica's barking and I've got one of the world's easiest yes. tricks to teach her. Subscribe to see a different kind of dog training series. We're in transit to the Rocky Mountains right now. And there we are, there's our little pod. We are in an amazing town called Genoa, Colorado. This is a small prairie town. Get this, the population is only 150, but I'm pretty sure it's at least half that because I haven't even seen a single person. The closest decent sized city is over 100 miles away from here. This is truly authentic America. Look, guys, training dogs isn't all about unicorns and rainbows. Hey. Can you let me out of here? They did not send me a live toy this time. You are literally a unicorn and a rainbow in a single life form. Yes, and I heard what you said back there. And I'm really tired of people not taking unicorns and rainbows seriously. Here you go, girl. Help, stop, let go, let go. I demand respect, help me. Oh, that is not good. At least it squeaks though. Super soaker. Oh, wow, okay. Hey, I got something to say. What's up, flamboyant flamingo? It seems like you might need something more tough than those yeah, soft yeah. toys. Yeah, you super chewer guys are clearly made for a very tough dog. Hey, is that all you got? Come on, you can do better than that. Everyone's got a clear choice, bark box or super chewer box. You can get a free box of either when you sign up for a subscription at barkbox.com slash dog training or superchewer.com slash dog training. I'll have links below. Veronica continues to want to bark at, well, everything that moves, including every single vehicle that passes by our trailer. And we've seen so far in the series that sometimes her barking starts to get better, and other times it seems like she's really out of control. And today is one of those really out of control days. I don't know, Inertia. So really, I don't know that I've ever had a dog that was so barky at vehicles Did before. You see that? She just finished her barking outburst, saw me looking at her, and came over here and laid down and just looked at me perfectly. So I'm wondering, is she just barking to get a treat now? There is the risk of that, and we'll try to shorten the distance between those two events and yeah. until eventually she just skips the barking and goes straight for her acknowledgement. My advice for stopping barking is to capitalize on those moments between barks, even if it's just a breath. Compliance is compliance. I would rather her potentially risk getting confused while saying, hey, I'm gonna take direction from you and pay attention to you. We can work out that confusion later, but it's far more important that her attention is on you right now rather than continuing to bark. Okay. Inertia, I'm so proud of you. You've been the model citizen. I like how you got Veronica under control at least once, but it's not like she's done being trained because of that. This is one of the worst barking outbursts we've seen in quite a while, but overwhelming consistency, Brie. <laughs> It's like, there's a truck out there. Way out there. Veronica? Yes. Good job. Can you be quiet? But I thought that was an amazing job of getting through to her. You saw the truck, you were calm, you were patient, you asked for her attention like you've practiced a thousand times before. Not all with success will remind you, but it's starting to seep in, I think. She gets up there to decide if she wants to bark at a car. So you can preempt it, like she's yes. foreshadowing. We all know our dogs so well, so do you know when your dog perks up and they're thinking about barking? You can read them like a book. I see it in her eyes right now that she's like, like she's not just looking, she's like really looking, you know what I mean? That's your cue to be on them in order to get that attention back on you so that you can show them how to behave. Even if you don't see them perk up yet, but you see the thing they're gonna bark at, like a car. Maybe ask for some additional stuff. I think you'd get a relax or a down. Can you relax? I'm sorry to think about it before I even said it. We're not yelling at Veronica. We're not punishing her. We're not trying to intimidate her into stopping her barking. Because barking can be one of those frustrating things. And I know that is the instinct of a lot of people. This is a good example of focusing on what we do want. Silence, no matter how brief, instead of what we don't want. Oh, here, Veronica, look at me. Good. Yes. And see, I would start throwing in some goods because she's pretty stable right now. Remember those goods stack up to yeses. You're right. So, I keep forgetting about that. And yeses equal things that Veronica likes. In this case, treats. This is what I'm giving her, crum little crumbs of this treat. It looks ridiculous, 
But that way I don't have to give her very much. But sometimes people will say to me, well, when my dog is in one of these barking outbursts, they tend to not be interested in treats or toys. And that is a sign that our dogs are over threshold, that they're too difficult to communicate with in those particular moments. And in those cases, removal from the environment or the stimulus or putting the blinds down and then working on look at me or sit or anything else that's incompatible with the barking is what I would recommend. I have been there with Veronica before where she's like, bark, 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 and I have a treat right there at her nose. And she's just like, get that out of my face. I want to see that thing I'm barking at. So when you are in that position, just keep in mind, you're asking too much of your dog. So she's right at the line where she's barely able to be communicated with under this particular set of circumstances. Good girl. Sometimes the wind's been getting her too, because it's a really windy day. Good girl, that's normal. And also that grain elevator, the noise from that. I think I have a lot of work to do with the sound desensitization. Every single sound we hear while on this road trip is such a new sound to her and to me. I didn't even know grain elevators made that sound. I didn't even know grain elevators existed. <laughs> what do you think about those who stereotype dogs like this as being yappy? I just feel like that's not really fair. Do you think yappy is like a slur towards a dog? Honestly, kind of, yes. Hmm. When people say it, it feels like it has that weight, like, ugh, yappy. It's very dismissive. Yeah. It really is. And dismissing these vocalizations as something trivial, like being yappy, isn't productive to resolving the issue or understanding where our dogs are coming from. Small dogs deserve as much respect as bigger dogs. I agree completely. If a big dog was doing the same exact thing, you wouldn't call them yappy. You would be like, that dog barks too much or that dog has a reason to be barking and maybe I should address yeah. it. Can you be quiet? That's a truck, it's normal. <laughs> And it's actually normal. <coughs> Veronica, can you, can you look at me? Yes. I mean, these are the That's moments good. that can just be so overwhelming. We've got to, as people, patiently and consistently really spell it out for our dogs. This is also one of those examples of how going extra slow can yield faster results. And let's put things in context. Like, we've been dealing with barking her entire life right now, which is just a few months. But how many dogs have you met in your life who continue to have this excessive barking issue for years and years because it goes unaddressed? And it's never too late to deal with this. We just want to be very very proactive in how we approach it. Do you know how to shake? Nope. I keep hoping she'll just know it. You want to teach her how to shake right now? I think I can talk you through it. Now I know what many of you are thinking right now. Zach and Bree, I don't care about tricks. I just want my dog to stop barking and stop peeing in the house and pay attention to me. But yes, you do. Teaching tricks like this teaches our dog how to think. And thinking is what accelerates our progress in other areas of life with our dogs. Sit is a trick, lie down is a trick, stay is a trick, and yes, shake hands is a trick. Look at Play Dead, she's I know. so cute. She's really I lobbying hard for a treat right now. You can tell she's been conditioned to Play Dead because she knows that gets her great things in life. There's nothing cuter. How could you look at this and not give her a treat? Well, we gotta stop it, I'm Bri. never, I'm never stopping. <laughs> never. My instinct is to like hold a treat and see if she paws at it. So Do it. <laughs> yeah, she's probably gonna be thinking, lie down. That's because when I hold up a treat in front of Veronica, she remembers that training exercise that we've gone over. You know how with some dogs, you can just walk up to them and be like, hi, and they'll just shake. I keep hoping Veronica will do that, that's why I keep trying. But... I feel like almost everybody trains their dog how to shake hands. Maybe hold it right up there. Let her lick it. Let her see okay. you got a treat. I mean, our hope here is that Veronica will say, gosh, I want that treat. And you're holding it so tight. Maybe if I paw at it, I'll get it. Whoop! Well, she moved her leg yes. there. Yes. Ah! <laughs> that click means good dog. Here's a prize. That was good. That was good. Okay. 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 So let's try again. Yes. Fine. So she didn't shake, but why'd you click? Because her two hands, I mean, two hands is better than none, right? Yeah, she's using her legs, so it's a way to say, hey, you're on the right track. In her shot, you are ruining my shot. Okay, I know. You're Do you right. want to show her? Shake. Yes. That's right, that's Perfect. what shake looks there. like. So that time I just clicked for the look at me. I love that you're finding something easy to say yes to. It can really help to do some easier things that your dog already has learned to clear their mental palate, I guess. Yeah, because it can be sort of frustrating if you like, completely have no idea what someone is asking of you. And so by giving her a win, I feel like that helps keep her interested. Like, okay, well, at least I'm winning sometimes. Exactly, give her a win. I like that. So I'm thinking I'll do puppy push-ups for a second. And then once she's into it, I'll try shake again. It's a great idea. Yes. 
And just because our game plan is to teach Veronica how to shake in this case, doesn't mean that she's not going to bark at every tumbleweed that rolls by. Right. So we're still working on her unwanted barking. Yeah. And we're practicing things she knows, mm -hmm. trying to introduce this new trick all at the same time. Right. And this is a great example of how we really have to be flexible and work on multiple concepts at one time. Yeah, I could close this the window. True. No, but don't. Uh, yeah. I don't want to. Yeah, the I want her to learn. Like, that's right. That's exactly She's right. She's crazy. She needs to learn. <laughs> No one's gonna call you yappy. But we know Veronica is smart enough to learn how to shake here. I mean, she is on the cusp of breaking through. That hop is on the right track too, because she moved both of her feet. Ideally, I just want her moving one, but I'll take what I can get here. Yes, good, that was good. I mean, that timing is spot on. The microsecond her foot moved, the click yes. went off. And I think that's gonna be a question that a lot of people will ask too. Do I have to use the clicker? No, but if you're less experienced or new to training dogs, especially where you prioritize positive reinforcement training, a clicker can really help you get a lot better with your timing and being able to communicate what we like the moment we like it can be very powerful when we're teaching our dog and speed up results quickly. But we really need to brainstorm here and make this easier for everyone involved. This move should be patented by me. Then I think we can retire, maybe get some royalties for it. It's a way to like really put the tree just out out of reach when you're trying to get a dog to use their arms. Is so this? yeah, yeah. If you can get her nibbling on the tree, yes, there goes the leg lift oh. right there. Do you see that? Yeah. I don't even know if I caught that. I was so into it. Go ahead. Right. <laughs> yeah, if you can yes. somehow get that morphing into a more deliberate rate, <laughs> you know, you're gonna quickly evolve it here. Hopefully quickly, we'll see. And now maybe, you know, put it more, a little more out of reach where she's forced to use her front paws a little more. Yeah, a little more. Yeah, and if you can, Oh my god, kidding she's me? so cute. Tell me dogs don't understand every word. Oh, Such a perfect. show off. I'm a little curious to see how much faster you could get it. I am the captain now. <laughs> the cheese okay. bites are. Sit. Good. Yes. And you, I could be clicking here as well. I'm just opting to say yes. And like with the click before, yes means the same thing, provided we go out of our way to follow it up with a treat. I mean, there's nothing magical about the word yes or the click. We have to make sure that it means something to our dogs. And in this case, if it means, hey, you're getting something awesome, they're more likely to repeat that behavior. Good. Yes, I'll take that. She lifted her other foot up, but I want her really kind of grabbing at the treat, so. Don't know if we're gonna get that. Here. Good. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. She's registering yes really well. She's likely to bark at that car if she sees it. Here. Excellent job of being one step yes. ahead, Bree. You Thank you for the heads up there so I can preempt the barking. Mm -hmm. If I can get her focused on a trick in the presence of a car, I'm like, what? Yes. Mm -hmm. Fine. Pretty good. good. Yeah. And so you can see even in the single training session, I'm moving fast, but I'm already trying to have a game plan from having to do this to get shake to eventually being able to just say shake. So faking her out with a treat and then following up with a reward. You see yeah. what I mean? And then moving it farther and farther away when we get into a momentum uh, event. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on, good girl. Now, now I'm gonna immediately raise the criteria here. I don't want both feet coming up, I want one. Yes! And that's because she's starting to demonstrate that she's capable of lifting only one foot. So I think I can kind of be a little more stingy at this point, but I'm flexible enough that if that doesn't prove to be true, I would take a step back. You don't wanna be so rigid in your dog training that you insist that it has to be this way. Yes! Wow, it's been a minute and a half, Zach. It took me like 20 minutes to get to that point. I mean, it's all, you know, I'm really practiced with this particular task here. Yeah, and I loosen the jar for you, so. That's right, yes, that's right. I couldn't do it without your hard work. <laughs> Let's talk about cute puppy tricks. Yes! <laughs> there was no treat in my hand that time. Way nice. to be a cameraman, too. Oh, Great gosh. Zach's camera skill. No, so. I got the shot of her lifting her paw up. How do you get nominated for the Pulitzer Prize for Photography? For YouTube B-roll? I'm very talented. That was pretty amazing yeah. progress between the both of us. Great teamwork to get Shake there. I'm thinking with her unwanted barking that we're dealing with that we need to go outside and work on that. She's got some energy inside of her. We need to get it out. Excessive barking can be substantially quelled with regular exercise that engages them mentally and physically. All right, very windy this morning, but Veronica and I are out here trying to exercise with this. She loves it. What do you think? I know the definition of fetch is a lot more specific than most people think, at least according to Zach. They have to chase the toy in a straight line, pick it up, 
bring it back in a straight line. Oh my gosh, that was really good. They have to let go, which she's not great at, but she's getting better and eagerly await the next throw and do it consistently. I've noticed with Veronica, sometimes she does it flawlessly and most of the time she doesn't. Playing regular fetch with her continues to be a critical part of our training because she has to have that physical outlet. It's not reasonable to expect a curious smart dog with lots of energy to just be quiet and not have problem behaviors without giving them a fair outlet for all of that energy and intelligence. Yeah, she's a puppy. She can't just turn it off. And that would be true even if she was an older dog, to be clear. So most of the time, she'll chase it, she'll pick it up, but bringing it back, yeah, it's a little meh. Remaining exciting and encouraging Veronica to chase Brie or me, whoever's working with her, is working well to resolve bringing the toy back. And I think that's because dogs really like to chase rather than just throwing it and trying to get them to figure out they're supposed to come back. It really spells it out for them and makes it a lot easier if you just book it the other way. Because then they're like, hey, wait! And then you'll be surprised at how that can evolve into a very fluid retrieve. And we've been using a variety of toys too. My goal is Frisbee, but we mix it up a lot just to keep her really interested. Take a break. Why not? Good girl. Oh, there you go. That might work. Yeah, interception. Now you remember just a second ago when we said fetch would reduce barking? I have evidence that it might work. They're knocked out. That's good. They're satisfied. Neither of these dogs are anxious. They're not barking. They're not jumping. They're satisfied. We continue to get Veronica used to that tickly, brushy, really weird toothbrush feeling by just letting her chomp down on the brush end of our toothbrush whenever she's feeling super bitey. I'd rather her bite that than most other things. I invented that. Try to be at least a little proactive and keep their biting focused on the brushy end, not like the entire toothbrush, and keep it pointed towards their teeth and gums as much as you can so you actually get a little real brushing done as they're chomping down. Do this with your puppy for a few minutes a day and you will be well on your way to having a dog who is super good at getting their teeth brushed and your vet will thank you. Yeah, but does this really work? If only we had an after shot with a dog who is good with getting their teeth brushed. Come on, come, you know, you know the drill. Now, I'm not saying that our dog Inertia loves having her teeth brushed, but she is extremely tolerant. Even to this day with Inertia, I still go really slowly with her. I don't want to force this upon her. You really have to read your dog well when doing sensitive things like this, whether it's clipping their nails or brushing their teeth. Also take note of how I'm not really restraining her. I think so many of us wait until our dog is in the position of having to have their teeth brushed. Like we're on a schedule and we need to get it done really quick. There we go. Wow. It's important to really set up these sessions in the way that we are with Veronica right now. Super low key and understanding. Good job. I wanna see what's around us because best I can tell there's a lot of, well, I'd say nothing, but actually nothing can be quite interesting. Now we're somewhere in the middle of Genoa, Colorado right now, and I'm absolutely loving the vibe here. I think we should take the dogs out and see what we can find. Yeah, it's feeling pretty eerie around here, I have to say. Hey cutie, you're so cute. These dogs are so curious. There's something so trippy about exploring a new town. Trippy is exactly the right word, I think. I feel like I'm in a Disney attraction right now, or like that show Westworld. It just feels so different than what I'm used to in my day-to-day -day life. This is not a tourist attraction. We are quite literally a uh, hundred miles away from a big city. You can just feel that there must be so many memories on this street. And here we are training our dogs. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Making more memories. I mean, talk about changing your environment. While much of this neighborhood is abandoned, there are occupied homes here and there, as we are quickly reminded of by this barking dog. Uh-uh. It's okay. Fence. Yeah. Good hop the fence, that'd be alert. Come on. Come on, Veronica. Always looking for those surprises. Yeah. Look, yeah, pretty dynamic place. I definitely hear a coyote right now. Well, then let's get out of here. I'm getting out of here. Do you hear that? It's getting closer. Yeah. Stay in front of me. I am. I feel like I'm in that Walking Dead video game. Look, it's the Genoa Sentinel. That's kind of cool. Okay, I'm going to put her down. Help me remain on alert. I think I hear police sirens in the background. I might've forgotten to pick up that poop back in Texas. Oh God, I've been found out, Bree. I knew this was gonna happen eventually, Zach. My career is over. My name is Zach George. I'm a YouTube dog trainer. I'm speaking to my subscribers now. There are gonna be some things that you'll come to learn about us in the next few weeks. I just want you to know that no matter how it may look, I only had you 
in my heart. Wait a minute, so they're not after us? Turns out they're after someone named Walter and Jesse. And okay, moving on. I've got to teach Veronica how to leave something alone now. Jeez, that is creepy. Why did you find that, Veronica? You never know what you're going to encounter in public. This might be the weirdest thing I've ever had to have a dog leave alone. Right? I know. I really try to take advantage of opportunities to teach a real world leave it. Yes, you do. With the weirdest thing. I have to say. Yeah, because I think a lot of people, when they teach Leave It, they'll do it with a treat, they'll do it with a toy, but they rarely do it with real world objects as they encounter them after the foundation has been laid. The whole point of teaching Leave It with a treat when they're puppies is so that you can set them up for training sessions just like this, where they have to leave a human head alone. Yeah, there's a gap you have to bridge there between the treat and the head. Leave it alone. Leave it. Yes. Okay, get it. <laughs> Good girl. Good job. There goes Bree. She's taking the truck. I see Zach is filming me leaving. There they go. Leaving them. Oh boy. Veronica, you're not supposed to be out of your crate. I have her tied to me. This is a special moment for me and Veronica. We just left Zach and Inertia playing Frisbee and we are driving away to the next town because there isn't a restaurant in the town we're staying in. And so we're gonna go retrieve some pizza and I don't know, there's something about it. This is one of our first moments, like girl time together. You feel it too, I can tell you do. We're like away, we're having fun and suddenly everything clicks and we're just having an adventure and we are a team and we're BFFs and it has all fallen into place. This is really what I'm hoping to get out of traveling around. Just a different view every day. Genoa, Colorado, we will never forget you. It's an amazing town, but we are still a long way from Alaska. Yeah, it's time to move on to our next town, and we still have so many places to see on this journey, and we haven't even gotten into wildlife country. Inertia, there's a moose over there. Get a free BarkBox, or a Super Chewer box, or both when you sign up for a multi-month plan. Go to BarkBox.com slash dog training or SuperChewer.com slash dog training. And to keep up with this journey, subscribe to my channel, get my books, follow us on TikTok and Instagram, and we will see you somewhere.